Okay, so uh, our next speaker of this lecture series is Florian Inescu from Georgia State University. And Florian is a student of my Hoxter and he graduated in 2001. Uh, and he, I think he was a postdoc at Utah and then he moved to uh, Georgia State as a faculty. And he has written uh, important papers on this tight closure, F rational rings, and Hubert Kuhn's multiplicity. And I've learned a lot from him. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to introduce him. Uh, so the title of uh, the talk is, uh, of the title of the lecture is uh, F rational rings and rational similarities. So Florian, go ahead. Thank you very much Ninchuan for this uh, very friendly introduction. Uh, and thank you for your uh, lectures. They were very nice. Um, I'd like to start by uh, thanking the organizing committee for uh, putting together such a nice uh, summer school and uh, for inviting me to, to um, say a few words about uh, F rational rings and rational singularities. Um, the purpose of the nodes, the way I thought about them is to um, introduce the students to the concept of rational singularities and try to give a fairly careful introduction in the main ideas and uh, develop the, the, the bulk of the, the, the fundamental results about the uh, rational rings. And then um, uh, sort of go ahead and provide some of the major contributions to the field, which I can't prove all in, in three lectures. Uh, so uh, the first part of it will be uh, more detailed in terms of proofs. And as we advance in the subject, uh, I will s indicate results, but uh, either sketch proofs or um, not include proofs at all due to uh, lack of time. However, uh, I will uh, try to include a fairly comprehensive reference list so people can start there and uh, look at uh, many of the papers written on the, written on the subject uh, if they're interested. Uh, in the in this concept, so F rational rings are really among the cl uh, classes of um, one of the classes of rings uh, associated with tight closure theory that um, tends to have very many beautiful results connected to it, and many of the uh, so to speak the, the the results that one would hope that they they work they actually work for F rational rings. So it's one of the the sort of uh, test cases, if you have some ideas on, on things that relate to tight closure in some way or another, uh, F rational rings provide a, 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 a ground for testing to see uh, if they work. Uh, that being said, many some of the results are very, very deep uh, and beautiful. And even the theory itself um, requires some care to develop carefully. So I'll, I'll spend some time uh, on that to try to explain some of the intricacies. Uh, as much as I can. All right, so let's start with that. So uh, I should uh, I should say before uh, uh, I move to defining this class of rings that I'm freely using the work of many experts who contributed to this. Uh, Huxter, Hunicke, Karen Smith, Feder, Watanabe, Aberbach, Velez, among others. And I will try to quote the results, but um, uh, I, I might not be able to do that all the time. Uh, that being said, we should all realize that this is done by, by other people, not by me, I'm just presenting the work. Um, all right, so let's start with uh, some notations. I know that this has been done already, but I just wanna fix some of the notations that I'm gonna be using uh, for the remaining of the notes of the lectures. So rings are gonna be notated for the first lecture at least characteristic is just P, where P is prime greater than zero. And Q is always gonna denote the power of P. The Frobenius map uh, is denoted by capital F and it's it iteration, Fe. It uh, um, sends an element of the ring R to R to power Q. Uh, when you have this iteration of Frobenius, the target map, the target ring, I'm sorry, can be regarded as a R algebra via the E iteration of Frobenius. And I'm gonna use uh, the notation R to power parentheses E, which is uh, 
was often denoted in the previous notes uh, lectures by F lower star uh, E of R. So once we uh, have this R algebra, if you tensor with it, a module M, you can uh, come up with a functor on R modules. And uh, sometimes this is um, called the Frobenius functor, the peskin spiro functor. Uh, we need this functor to be able to define the closure for modules. I know it was defined, but I just want to recall what the definition is that I'm going to use. So in order to define the tight closure for uh, some module N in a module M, you need to have this um, concept of N power bracket Q in M, which is the image of the tensor product between RE tensor N into RE tensor M. So the image of this map is this module. And now with that, tight closure is consists of, oh, I, I need one more notation. Um, we also denote X power Q to be um, the image of one tensor X in Okay, so um, if X is an element of M, you can uh, take um, this map and the image of this into here is X to power. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, let me recall the definition of tight closure consists of all these elements x in m such that there exists c not in any minimal prime of uh, r such that c x to power q belongs into this n power bracket q of m okay so if we um, if we take m equal, equals r and n equals i, an ideal, in r we get the tight closure of an ideal. Okay, so this has been defined. So this is the notation that I'm going to use. Um, let me recall what a parameter ideal in a ring uh, R is. It will be an ideal generated by uh, K elements where the height of the ideal is exactly K, okay? And um, under my conditions, um, you can think of parameter ideals elements, that would, uh, parameter ideals as ideals generated by elements that remain, are part of a system of parameters when you localize the prime ideal, for example, okay? And uh, this has been mentioned many times before, but system of parameters in a local ring are of course, um, uh, a number of a string of elements, x1 through xd, where d is the dimension of the ring, uh, such that the radical of the ideal is the maximal ideal of the, the local ring, okay? All right, so one of the main uh, results that we need, we need a couple of results to be able to develop the notion of irrational rings. So the first one is the colon capturing uh, property. Um, it was proven by Huxley and Kinnikin and was stated before by, I think, Emil and I, I think Lynch one as well. Um, if you have a local equidimensional ring that is a homomorphic image of a color ring and you denote by X1 through XD a system of parameters, um, then the failure of the ring of being Cohen-Macaulay, which is quantified by this colon ideal, is contained in the tight closure. Maybe I should uh, just uh, I here and I plus one. And this is true for all I between zero and D minus one for D 
is the dimension of r. Okay, so this I, this theorem was stated for um, is stated for equidimensional rings, homomorphic images of coil color rings, and these assumptions will be crucial in the way I set up the theory. I'll get back to this point later, but for now, uh, I'm going to use this result many times. So this is the column capturing um, property of uh, a system of parameters. All right, so now I would like to recall some uh, facts about excellent and f finite rings that will be used. I know that some authors uh, before me just dealt with f finite rings, but I, I don't think we uh, need to restrict ourselves to that. And um, I think it's useful to just in include the thoughts about excellent rings in general. So let me recall what an excellent ring is. An ethereal ring R is excellent if it's universally catenary. If the formal fibers of uh, every localization are lo localized at P, where P is a prime ideal, are geometrically regular, and um, for every finitely generated R algebra. S, the regular locus is open as in the Zariski topology. Okay, so this is a rather technical uh, condition. However, the important thing about this is that this class of excellent rings uh, is stable under the major operations in commutative algebra, like localization, homomorphic image, taking a finitely generated algebra, and a complete local ring is excellent. So if you know all these things, you don't really need to worry about the definition too much. You know that if you have a complete uh, local ring, you have an excellent ring. And then if you do natural uh, algebraic operations, so to speak, on, on this, you are going to preserve the excellence property. In relation to, 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 to this concept, there are two, uh, two results that I should mention. First, I need to recall the, what a finite means. So, a ring is a finite if the Frobenius map is a finite map, meaning the target R is a finitely generated uh, module over the, the domain R. And this was uh, covered the length in the, the previous lectures, including these results that I want to mention. So um, the first result is the result of cons. That if you have a, a finite ring, you have an excellent ring. And um, the second one, which is useful at times, is that if you have a F finite ring, this result is due to Gabber, then it's a homomorphic image of a F finite regular ring. Okay. All right. So if you want, you can restrict yourself just to find the rings, but I will try to use excellence uh, when, when possible, just to explain uh, how that comes into play, because you, you will see that in the literature and it's good to, to, to have an idea of why that it comes into play. And this is really the, the one of the main reasons, I think, um, the class of excellent rings is, is so important for the theory of uh, tie closure. So you, we know that test elements in Tycosia theory which, and test ideas have been covered and they are very, very important. And they, one of the deepest results in, in the theory about the existence of test elements is due to Huxley and Hünecke. And the, the theorem states the following. So there are two conditions. Either the ring is reduced and a finite or is reduced and essentially a finite type over a local excellent ring, okay? So these are the two, two conditions. So then if um, you have an element C in R not such that R localized C is F not F finite. I mean, I meant to, to write F regular in Gorenstein, then a power of C is a test element. 
for R. Okay, so this result actually is crucial in the development of uh, this class of irrational rings. So uh, the, I would say that it, to be able to set up the theory, we clearly need colon capturing in this result. All right, so now um, one question that will appear towards the, 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 the end part of the lecture today is, uh, can we have a result? Is, is there any result that um, provides test elements? You see this result that I stated, is the, uh, uh, stated provides a power of an element C as a test element. Uh, it's not as convenient than knowing that the power is a test element. You would like to actually have examples of test elements because if you try to check type closure uh, relations, you need a test element. Yeah, otherwise, you will just have to guess some C that works, and that might not be easy in, in particular cases. So, um, one result that it's um, also not easy to prove and provides examples of test elements is the following that uh, if you have, you need some conditions. For example, you need R to be geometrically reduced. and uh, finitely generated algebra over a field K of characteristic P, okay? Equidimensional. Then the Jacobian ideal of R over K, the elements of the Jacobian ideal that are not in any minimal prime, are test elements. And um, Cheng was show, for example, use this in, in the previous set of uh, exercises to produce test elements in, in his examples. So this is uh, the result of Huxter, Huneke, based on work of Liebman and Satter. Okay, so that's a source of uh, test elements for us. You have a ring like this. You can look at the Jacobian ideal, and I will I'll do some, some examples where you will, you will see how, how we get this. But this will provide clear test element for us. All right, so what's the definition of an uh, ever rational ring? So first, I'm going to define it for uh, local rings. And I'm taking the point of view here of uh, Huxter. So you will see various definitions in the literature. And the main debate, I would say, I mean, it actually depends who you ask. Some people don't refer at all to tight closure when, uh, when define uh, uh, irrationality. Uh, this is a, a little newer point of view. And um, I think Lin Chuan Ma and Thomas Paul Stroud uh, uh, like that perspective. Uh, but most people refer to tight closure of system of parameters when we're when talking about irrational rings. And the main debate is whether or not uh, to assume that the ring is already a homomorphic image of a Kuehme color ring. And my point of view is influenced by uh, Huxter, whose uh, latest uh, uh, presentations on this uh, assume in the definition that uh, when you talk about irrationality, the ring is already a homomorphic image of a Kuehme color ring. And you will see that a rational ring is Kohe Macaulay. So it doesn't hurt to assume already that it's a homomorphic image of a Kohe Macaulay ring. In addition, most rings that appear in geometry or naturally in, in, in investigations are homomorphic images of Kohe Macaulay rings. So that's not really a, a, a super uh, strong assumption. So a ring is, a local ring is irrational if it is a homomorphic image of a Koe Macaulay ring and every ideal generated by a system of parameters is tightly closed. 
okay? And then, so that's the local definition. So you need to check that every ideal generated by a system of parameters is tightly closed. And now if you have an arbitrary ring, you still need it to be a homomorphic image. Of Coyne Macaulay. And when you localized at any maximum ideal M, you get an F rational ring. Okay. All right. So we define the notion locally, and then we say that if every localization of the maximal ideal is 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 uh, F rational, then that's the that's what a rationality means. All right, so let's start now the, uh, uh, stating the, the first results on this. So let's say we have an F rational ring. Then the first observation would be that in fact, every parameter ideal is tightly closed. TC would mean tightly closed, okay, to abbreviate. So um, how do we, uh, Prove this. First, uh, know that um, you can pass to a pass to a localization because the tight closure, if something is in the tight closure of an ideal, is preserved when you go to a localization. Um, and their parameters become just part of a system of parameters. So we can assume that R is local and X1, XK is part of a system of parameters. So I'm reducing this problem to showing that an ideal generated by a part of a system of parameters is tightly closed, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna complete to a full system of parameters. So let's say we have x1 to xk, xk plus one, xd, where D is the dimension of the ring R. And then for every non-negative integer, or greater or equal than actually than zero. Sorry, then one. Um, have this obvious inclusion. So the tight closure of it will be contained in the tight closure of this ideal. That but this idea is generated by a full system of parameters. So we know from the definition that this is tightly closed. And therefore, the tight closure of this ideal is containing the intersection over T of all this which is X1 through XK. Okay, so we get it, uh, we get uh, that every parameter ideal is tightly closed. All right, so now I'd like to, to um, talk a little bit about, sorry, yes, okay. Um, talk about what happens when you localize. Uh, so 
for that, we need uh, an exercise, which uh, is a sign in, in the notes. The exercise says the following, that if you have an arterial ring of characteristic P and S is a multiplicative closed set and you have an ideal I generated by N elements that form a regular sequence, then um, there exists an element of the multiplicative set such that the union of all these colon ideals or over all the elements, W in the multiplicative set. So you can just choose one particular element in uh, the multiplicative set such that you obtain the, so the union of these colon ideals is just this colon ideal. Okay, where again, you see n plus one appears there and n is the length of the regular sequence. Um, so this, we, this exercise requires a little bit of effort to prove. It's, it's not hard, but it's not a, a two liner either. And then there is another uh, exercise that is also the deceivingly uh, ingenious, the proof of it, says that if you have an element in um, S inverse R, where S is a multiplicative set, if you want to uh, look at the uh, S inverse R zero, meaning the complement of the minimal primes of this localization, every element in there can be written in the form C over T, where C is in R0 and T is in W. Okay? So, um, well, not WS. Okay. All right. So, we'll need these two exercises for our next result. The next result says the following that if you have a local ring of characteristic P and you take an ideal I that is um, generated by regular sequence and W is a multiplicative closed set, then tie closure commutes with localization or taking fractions in W. So W inverse I star is W inverse I star, okay? So, um, all right, so one direction is pretty clear. If you take an element U of the form X over S, where S in W and X in the triclosure of I, uh, well, let's write what it means for X to be in the triclosure of I, and we get this line, there exists a C, not in any minimal prime such that C times X to the power Q belongs to I power bracket Q for Q large enough. Um, well, if you involve C, S in there, then you get that C times X over S to power Q belongs to W inverse I power bracket Q for large enough Q. And that uh, simply says that uh, X over S is in the tight closure of W inverse I. Okay, so now the, the more intricate part is the converse. How do you show that if you have an element in the tight closure of uh, W inverse I, then uh, the, that element comes from uh, the tight closure of I. Okay, so um, using the exercise, you can find C in R0 and T in W, okay, such that. C over T, X over S uh, to, power, uh, to power Q belongs to W inverse I power bracket Q for Q large enough. Okay. Um, all right. So now if you clear denominators for every such Q, you obtain some element in the multiplicative set such that. This relation happens for 
or q large enough, okay? Well, what happens, so what do we have? We have this, right? So it means that CXQ belongs to this union. that appear in the previous exercise, which can be written in a more nicer form with a specific S zero to power N plus one to power Q. And S zero is independent of Q, okay? So from here, you get that S zero to power N plus one times X, if you write down what this means, belongs to I star, so, you can get from here that x over s is in the equation of i localized w or um, inverted with w. All right, so uh, this proves that uh, regular sequences behave nice with respect to any uh, localization. All right. Um, Sorry, Florian, before you move on. Um was the only place we used that I was generated by regular sequence was to apply that uh, that previous exercise? Yes, that's what they think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So regular sequences will localize nicely with respect, I mean, tight closure of regular sequences localized as well. Uh, there is another aspect uh, that uh, would be is relevant to mention is like behavior under completion, what happens there. So um, here, I'm gonna state the following exercise. If you have an excellent local ring of characteristic P and you have I M primary ideal, then I star expanded to the completion equals uh, the tight closure of the, of I R complete, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this exercise, um, but I'm gonna use it to show that every rationality is preserved under completion for, uh, for excellent rings. Actually, I think I, yes, okay. So take a local excellent ring. I'm claiming that every rationality is preserved. It's a ring is irrational if and only if the completion is irrational. So uh, one direction, you take an ideal generated by a system of parameters in R, hat, the completion of R respect to the maximal ideal. That ideal I is known to come from an ideal generated by a system of parameters in R. So you can write it in this form. I equals J R hat, where J is a system of parameters ideal. So then um, if you have an element X in I star, that is J R hat star. And by the exercise, that's the same as J star R hat, but uh, J star is J because we know that the ring is irrational. So we get that um, I is tightly closed. So an element generated by a system of parameters in R is tightly closed. And conversely, if you know that the ring is, R hat is irrational, Then you take an ideal generated by a system of parameters in R. And you expand that to R hat, you get an ideal generated by a system of parameters in R hat, okay? And then how about I star? 
I star can be computed due to the fa faithfully flannes property of completion as expanding into our hat and contracting back to R. And then using the fact that here that uh, our hat is irrational, uh, ideas generated by system of parameters are tightly closed. So you can easily get that uh, this intersection equals I using again the faithful flatness of the completion map. Okay. All right. So, um, Okay, so I'd like to, let's see. Yeah, let me, I'd like to state the following. If you have a ring that is a rational, then R is normal plus coin call, okay? And um, if F is a rational local, then you get for free domain as well, right? Because the normal local ring is domain. Okay? So this was mentioned before, but I'd like to provide a, a quick proof, proof. So we get that a principal ideal using the property the parameter ideals are tightly closed. Principal ideals uh, that generate a height one prime will be tightly closed. And we know that uh, this condition implies normality. Of R. Okay, so now how do we check the Coe Macaulay property? Coe Macaulay property can be checked locally. Okay, at every maximal ideal. So assume now R is local. You obtain, therefore, normal domain. So equidimensional. And um, therefore, because we know that every part of a system of parameters is tightly closed. We obtain the um, regular sequence property from the curl capture. All right. All right. So now we know that every rational rings are normal in Coyne Macaulay, and if you assume local, they are also domains. So, um, all right, so now, um, let's prove that um, this property of ref refractionality uh, localized it well, not at just every maximal ideal, but every, everything. So uh, if you have a homomorphic image of a comic color ring, then a ring R is irrational if and only if the localization is irrational for every maximal ideal. If and only if um, every localization is irrational at every prime. Okay. So here, the, 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 the important part is how to prove the following thing, that if you have a local ring that is irrational, 
how does one prove that R localized at P is a rational? Okay. Um, so now if you take X1 through XK um, in R such that they are part of SOP in the localization, um, take the ideal J that they generate. So we know that J is J star because R is a rational and this is a, a parameter ideal. So using the localization property that we um, proved before, we get that uh, this uh, ideal generates a tightly closed ideal in our localization. All right, so now let's start to with, uh, 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 so this were like so a little low hanging fruit, so to speak, from the definition and the colon capturing property. Uh, we can prove a little bit, uh, a result that is a little bit more involved. Uh, and it says the following. So let's take, again, we take an equidimensional homomorphic image of a chromacolor ring. We do that because we're gonna use colon capturing. And we take a system of parameters for the ring R. And now we're gonna assume that the ring R admits test elements, okay? So go back to the original result about the existence of test elements that I stated. This is where you would either wanna use the reduced finite or that the ring R is reduced and essentially a finite type over a, an excellent local ring. So plainly put, we just admit we have test elements um, for R. So then we have, a number of statements. The first one says that the colon X1 gives you the tight closure of X1 to XK. Okay. So this is for all K between one, okay? Importantly, if you know that this sequence generate a tightly closed ideal, then every partial um, ideal generated by a a subset X1 to XK is also tightly closed. Okay. And then three, if you have a, if X1 to SD generate a tightly closed ideal, then one gets that they form a regular sequence and R is Kolmikoli and four, if X1 to XD generate a tightly closed ideal, then we get that the ring is F rational. So the importance of this result is um, establishes the fact that leads to, towards the fact that uh, to check the F rational property, you need to only use one system of parameters. In the definition, if you remember, the definition is for local rings, it's, it's uh, formulated in checking that all um, ideal generated by system of parameters will be tightly closed. This will allow us to just check one system of parameters. Okay. And for that, though, you need test elements. Okay, so let me sketch this. Just making sure, so uh, it's a 15 minute lecture, right? Does anybody, it's from yes. 10 to 10.50, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's start with one. All right, so um, we want to show that if z times xk plus one belongs to the tight closure of x1 to xk, then somehow z is already an x1 to xk. Okay, so that's the, the uh, essentially the first part. Okay, so write down the definition of what this line means. So we can have a C that works for a large enough Q. And um, therefore CZ to power Q belongs to this colon. which due to the colon capturing property applied to the acute powers of these elements were here in the tight closure of x1 to the power q x k to the power q and now we use this test element this is the place where we need it to further multiply this relation um, by this test element. So then we have D, C, Z to power Q now belongs to D times this. But by the test element property, this is in just in the ideal. And then if you look at this relation, this establishes that Z I'm sorry, the Z belongs to the tight closure of the idea generated by X1 through XK. Okay. So we needed the test element here to not make it depend on Q essentially, right? Right, that's why we need the test element. We need a test element that works for all this Qs, okay? So um, yeah, that's it. it's an essential point. Okay, now, um, part two says that if x1 to xd gives you tight, uh, tightly closed ideal, then every partial, every subset x1 to xk also produces a tightly closed ideal. And this is done by reverse induction. So basically, we have the statement for k goes to d because we just said that x1 to xd generated a tightly closed ideal. And we want to descend to one less uh, parameter. So, in other words, we can assume x1 to xk plus one tightly closed, and we want to show that x1 to xk is tightly closed. Okay. So let's take an element in the disclosure of x1 to xk. This naturally is containing x1 to xk plus one star, okay, which we know is tightly closed. So it can be written like this, All right? So you can write this element z as an element x with x coming from here, okay? So when you do that, then you, you note that R X K plus one is Z minus X, okay? Which belongs to the tight closure of X1 through SK. In other words, if you restate this, you get that R itself belongs to this colon that appeared in the part one of, of this theorem that we just proved. So this is, by what we proved in part one, X1 through XK star, okay? Uh, well, if you trace back what we just did, 
you realize that this says this decomposition says that in fact x1 through xk star can be written as a portion for x1 through xk plus some multiple of something in the type closure of x1 to xk. And now Nakayama lemma shows that this ideal equals this. Okay, so we use part one to show this. All right. Um, okay. Now part two, if we have a tightly closed ideal X1 through XD, we know that every subset will form um, a tightly closed ideal. So by using the colon capturing property, you get the regular sequence property immediately as before. So that produces, that proves that if you have an uh, uh, ideal generated by system of parameters that is uh, tightly closed, then the ring is square Macaulay. And then uh, finally, um, um, it remains to show that if you have that, if you have an ideal generated by one system of parameters, then um, this can actually, uh, the, the fact that that ideal is tightly closed can be transferred to every ideal generated by a system of parameters. So that actually it's a little bit more involved and I don't think I'd be able to finish in one minute. So uh, I guess I, I actually already over time. So I'm gonna start with that part uh, next time. So next time the, the plan is to finish this and move to the connection between every rationality to local cohomology, do some examples, and uh, uh, then veer towards rational singularities. All right, let's uh, thank Florian for his. Uh, okay, discussion. yeah, let's thank uh, Florian. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question real quick. Um, back when you were doing, when, back when you were localizing F rationality, um, it you know suffices to check at maximal ideals or at um, any prime. Does this does it? I don't know about this. If R is F rational, is S inverse R F rational for any multiplicatively closed set S? Yeah, yeah. that's because you, if S if R is F rational, then R localizes a P for every prime. Is yeah, right. so that immediately applies that. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Sure. Other questions? Yes, other questions? So if if no more questions, I think let's thank Florin again for the nice lecture and thank you.